So it turns out that Superman is gay. Now, it's not really Superman. It's Superman's son, who they're now saying is Superman. So here we see it's his 17-year-old son, John, <clears throat> who's taken up his father's mantle. But he's now confirmed to be bisexual. Sorry, I said gay. It's bisexual. Don't want to mislead anybody. It's bisexual. He does not discriminate against the ladies. It's always good. Now, it says John Timms. It's a pretty big deal doing it with John Kent as Superman. I hope this kind of thing will not be seen as a big deal in the future. And I say, it's not a pretty big deal right now. Because they're turning every character gay. So it's pretty much just following the leader. And we see that. Even Dean Kane here comments and he says basically they say it's a bold new direction and I say they're bandwagoning. He is completely right. He is completely right. There's nothing new and exciting and um, thrilling about this. Now, Dean Kane goes on to say that maybe if they'd done it 20 years ago, it would have been a big deal. I don't even say that. Because in the year 2000, nobody gave a crap if somebody was gay. I'm sorry. I've been around for a lot longer than that even. And I remember when I was in elementary school, yes, people would get called gay or queer or whatever. And people would make jokes about somebody's sexuality. But the reality was, that was no different than calling somebody who was overweight fatty. Or calling somebody that wore glasses, four eyes or whatever. It was mainly just something that people would do to pick on somebody unless they were your friend and you were calling them something um, that's sort of friendly teasing. But the reality is, is nobody cared. Nobody cared if you wore glasses. Nobody cared if you were a little overweight. Nobody cared if you wore a pocket protector uh, and put all your pens in it and you were a bit of a nerd. Nobody really cared. Okay? They just saw something different in that person and put it out there now if that was the case basically you know decades and decades ago when we see this this is not a big deal the only thing is is you you john Timms, you're trying to make it a big deal by saying it's a big deal and trying to drum it up and putting it on superman now during his comment here and I'll say this is for Dean Kane's comment. I'm going to be rambling a little. He goes on and he says, oh, look, Robin just came out as bi. Who's really shocked about that one? Well, I would say I'm not shocked. But it is shocking because it shows that the people who do this to the character have no understanding of and no care for the history of the character. Because I pulled up a few uh, sites here. And we're going to say, look, Tim Drake. Tim Drake was the... Um, I don't know if he's still the most recent, but he was like the third Robin. We're going to go through his love interests. Girl, 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 girl. Look at this. A whole bunch of a whole bunch of females. Now we're going to move on. We're going to say Dick Grayson. He's the one that most people know from the Batman TV series. Oh, look. Girl, 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 girl. There we go. So we got a whole lot of girls here. And now we're going to go to Jason Todd, who later became the Red Hood. And we're going to see here, oh, girls, 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 girls. So their history has been pretty clearly defined as heterosexual. So now they say they just came out as bi, but there's been no hint of that. There's been no hint of that. It's a total disregard for the history of the character, and therefore it's a destruction of the character. The way to do this, really, is that they would want to create a new character. Well, they wouldn't want to. They would want to co-opt something. But a person would want to create a new character. By creating a new character, you've got the blank slate. You can make them bisexual. You can make them gay. And that's going to be far, far, far better because you're not going to destroy something that is already established and that people like. Now, you could argue that John is a fairly new character. So we're free to do with as we want, which is great. But the problem is, is now that they are co-opting that idea of Superman. So it's actually not a, a new character. It's just an old character, but they're putting a new person 
as that character. And it doesn't generally work that way, depending on the type of character that you have. Superman is a character where it's basically sort of an ideal. You have characters like Green Lantern, and they are simply a hero, but they're by virtue of the fact that their power, their costume, it's a uniform. They're part of a galactic police force. Same thing with the Nova Corps. Okay. You can have Richard Ryder or you can have somebody else as a Nova because it's their job, effectively. Superman is a person. It's kind of like Batman. You can have Batman. And they did a decent story with, um, with Azrael taking over Batman's position. And the idea of that story, as far as I understand, was sort of to show you could put somebody who is similarly capable to Bruce Wayne in that position. But it's not going to be Batman because there's something intrinsic about Bruce Wayne that makes him that character where he operates in a certain way and he holds certain values and certain ethics. So when you just say, oh, John Kent is now Superman and he's bisexual, you're effectively co-opting the idea of Superman. And that's not going to go over well generally. Even with characters that belong to things like the Nova Corps or the Green Lanterns, you're not going to get a lot of buy-in because people grow attached to these people. Right? Now, when they're doing this, they're saying, oh, look, uh, he's going to be in a relationship with a young hacktivist. So he has to be in a relationship with an activist because the writer is an activist. And the writers are unable to simply craft good stories. And the reason they're unable to craft good stories is because they only see themselves. They are ideologues. And the problem with ideologues is they cannot look outside themselves. They often talk about empathy and understanding and diversity, but it's exactly the opposite. Everything has to be mono. It has to be exactly as they want it. When they create a story, they can't imagine themselves in somebody else's uh, shoes. They can't imagine what it's like to be somebody who doesn't think the way that they do, except to say they are evil. They can't have somebody who's good but disagrees with them. So when you get a situation like this, the activist person that they're going with, that has to be the case basically, because everything that they do is activism. They can't create something else. So that's this person here. And they're going to be addressing world societal problems. And I say, well, that doesn't make for a very compelling superhero story. Because it's kind of like way back in the day. Now, you did have the covers of, you know, Captain America punching Hitler in the face. But you can't have Superman or Captain America actually going in there and beating Hitler. Why? Because it's, it's a type of problem that you can't just write away and say it's beaten. You can't have Superman going in there and fighting against homelessness. Why? Because there will always be homelessness and thus you've set your character up for failure. But again, it's all about this activism. It's the ideologue. They say, oh, everybody's got to be gay. Everybody's got to be bi. Everybody's got to be queer or trans. And everybody has to be arguing against the system to say that this is okay when it is okay. Nobody gives a crap right now. So that brings us back to the idea that they could just create a new character. But the problem is they can't create a new character because the ideologue nature, and I'll say specifically from this side, from the leftist side and from the socialist side, cannot create. Okay? It cannot come up with new, exciting, compelling ideas. And the reason that it can't come up with new, exciting, compelling ideas is because to do so, you have to be able to stretch your boundaries of thought. You have to think about different ideas and different ways to approach things. So all we need to do is we, if we go back and we look here at, let's see, where is this? Here we go. Let's look at the 1985 Hobbit from Russia. Okay, look at that. Ain't that fantastic? Okay, look at the quality of these sets. Look at the quality of the costumes. Right. This is great. Look at this. 
Look at this. That just looks fantastic. It doesn't get any better than that. Now, if we look earlier than this, we are going to go to, let's see here, the Dark Crystal. And this was two years. This was two years before this. Uh, this is Age of Resistance. We don't want that. <clears throat> we want the original. So here we go. So we're just going to pop this on. We'll turn off the volume a bit. Here we go. And we're just going to look at the quality of the sets. And we're going to compare. Here we go. Look at this. Look at the quality of the sets, the quality of the filming, the angles of the filming. Now, again, this isn't live action versus the other one, which I think, frankly, makes this all the more impressive. Okay. Look at the designs. This was done earlier than the other one. Now, this technology existed basically three years previous, but the people here were creative. The people here were not pushing an agenda. They were doing a story. They're coming up with ideas that they want to tell. Here, with the Russian one, they're pushing an agenda. And this is an agenda that says you must push party policy. You must push the ideas of the ideologues. There is no room for breaking that um, that boundary for being creative within it because that might damage the message so we end up with stuff like this that is crapola nobody wants to watch this just like when we go where is this here marvel to debut gay captain america character during pride month look at this character look at this character nobody wants to look at this. Nobody wants to support this. As a transgender person, I'm happy to be able to present an openly gay person who admires Captain America and fights against evil to help those who are almost invisible to, uh, to society, Basil Dua says. And who's Basil Dua? I have no idea. I don't know if they're even mentioned in here. Oh, here you go. It was illustrated by uh, Jen Basaldua, Basaldua. I don't know. Um, so it's, oh, look, as a transgender person, boom, they were illustrated by them. Again, it's not the character. It's the person who has created the character. It's the artist putting themselves here. It's possibly the writer. I don't know anything about the writer, but it's that person putting, he stands for the oppressed and the forgotten. These are not exciting storylines. When we look at storylines, like from the X-Men, where we have the Brood storylines, we have the Shi'ar Empire, we have the Mutant Massacre, we have Dark Phoenix with Batman, you've got Killing Joke, you've got Dark Knight Returns, you've got Death in the Family, uh, Captain America had Secret Empire, Winter Soldier, Captain America No More. These are what people like, and these are stories that can actually push good, push thoughtful ideas where you where they get you thinking about something not where they are telling you something and saying this is good this is bad it's saying here's a story here's different opinions and leave you to do the thinking about it that's where it comes in but we end up with something like this here superman oh look we're just gonna have him kiss a, a purple-haired activist and boom representation and I think it says all you need to say here, right? As a transgender person, I'm happy to be able to present this who does this. I see myself in the character. Well, there's a reason Shaquille O'Neal has a Superman tattoo. And that's because he saw something of the character in himself. It wasn't that he was white. It wasn't that he was big and muscly. It's something, I think, about the character of the character. It's something in internal. It's something inspiring. It's something where that character lives up to values and morals and ethics that are elevated. It's not just that you see a superficial being who looks like you. If that were the case, then all those kids would have never loved buying their Michael Jordan shoes. 
their Air Jordans or having posters of Michael Jordan on their wall unless they were black and unless they were tall and unless they were great basketball players because that's not how being inspired by somebody works. And these people do not understand it. They do not understand it on a fundamental level, which is why they say something like, yeah, we've made Superman gay or we've made Superman bisexual, right? That's going to be inspiring. That's going to be uh, a tremendously compelling story. And it's like, no, that's not, that's not a story. That's just a facet of an individual, but I want to hear the story. And that's why sales are in the crapper because they don't care about the story and they can't tell the story. They are unable to come up with the creativity and the understanding and frankly, the empathy for other people to write a good, compelling story. That's the reality. 